Am I the a-hole for calling a woman a psycho for leaving a Bluetooth tracker in my car after our first solo date? My 42 wife passed away two years ago. We had been together since 1999. I was broken for a while and probably clinically depressed. I never sought treatment or anything. I was just not okay. I have recently decided that I am done being alone, so I asked my friends and family if they knew anyone that I might be interested in getting to know. I have never used online dating and I only had one girlfriend before I met my wife, so I am not exactly an expert at how to date. My friend's wife said she knew a nice woman and I agreed to go on a double date with them and her. I thought it went well and I said I would like to see her again. We agreed to go for dinner and see Anastasia. I picked her up at her apartment and once again I had a nice time. There weren't fireworks or anything, but I was comfortable with her and she is physically attractive. I dropped her back at her home afterwards and went over to see my sister. She insisted I come over and talk after the date so she could guide me. She was best friends with my wife. We met through her and she has become my protector since my wife died. So, I am having tea with my sister and this car pulls into the driveway. It is the woman I was out on a date with. I asked her how she found me and was kind of freaked out that she followed me. She said she had left an air tag in my car so she could come over. My sister said that was creepy AF and that if the sexes were reversed, the cops would be called. The woman tried to defend herself by saying that I already knew where she lived, so it wasn't that big a deal. I called her a psycho and asked her to please take the tracker out of my car or I would call the cops. Now I have been hearing for days from my friend's wife, saying that I overreacted because I don't know what it is like out there for women dating in their 30s. She says I'm being an a-hole for blowing it out of proportion and that I should be flattered that this woman wanted to come into my home for whatever after two dates. I told her that I did not need any more help or advice from her and blocked her. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. This is not a dating technique. It's a violation of law. As for your friend's wife, she needs to go search her own car and reassess who's overreacting about what. The sister is right. If Opie pulled a stunt like that, the woman would have called the cops. If the woman didn't want Opie to know where she lived, she could have taken multiple steps to protect that piece of information. Opie should call the cops. A person who does this is not going to go away just because they were rejected one time. The fact that she's so casual about it, freely admitting what she did, suggests she's tracking a lot of people. And we all know air tags come more than one to a pack. This is why her friend, Opie's friend's wife, needs to search her own car before excusing this behavior as just dating sucks. You know what's not hard for a woman in her 30s? Finding a married BFF. So what will her excuse be this time? Not the a-hole. As a woman, run. Run far and fast and don't look back. That's deceptive and controlling. It is rather impressive that she was able to stomp boundaries that weren't even established. If she wanted to come over, she could have asked, like an adult, like a sane adult. She doesn't get to make that unilateral decision by hiding a tracker on you. Your sister is right. Had you done that, cops would be involved. Everyone would be rallying behind her telling her what a stalker you are. Absolutely this. This is genuinely deranged. I have never heard of anyone doing this, and it's certainly not normal. Block and block any secondary people who think this is normal. Sending all best to Opie. Not the a-hole, obviously. Not the a-hole. Straight up. It is a lot more dangerous to date as a woman than as a man. That's factual. But there is no rational reason she would have left a tracker in your car. There is no rational reason for her to track you so she could see where you were slash who you were with. An air tag in her purse so her friends can track her? Absolutely reasonable and rational. Leaving that tag in your car so she can track you? That's stalking. I'd make a police report so you at least have a paper trail if she escalates her behavior. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not reminding my ex he was supposed to come over to see our daughter? I, 26 female, have a 7-year-old daughter. My ex, 28 male, wasn't involved in her life by his own choosing. But back in December, he reached out. It took some time, talking, and a little therapy, but he is back in our daughter's life for about four months now. We are working with the courts to establish paternity and for him to get custody. In the meantime, I've let him visit her at my place. He's taken her on day trips. 
since getting a bigger apartment, he's had her spend a night. He was supposed to visit her Wednesday, have dinner with us, and watch a movie. We tried to do things to three of us, per the therapist's recommendation, so she can see us get along. My ex said it'd be over around 6. He didn't show up. By 6.30, my daughter was hungry, so I fed her. I tried to put off the movie, but eventually let her watch it. She was disappointed about her dad not showing up. I put her to bed at 9. 11.30, my ex calls. Freaking out. He said he forgot we were supposed to have dinner. He only remembered because his girlfriend came home from work and asked how everything went. Rather than apologizing, he got mad at me and asked why I didn't call him. I said I'm not going to chase him down. I already spent nine months doing that when I was pregnant, begging him to be in her life. I'm not going to do that now. It's up to him to make an effort and remember the stuff. We had therapy the next day and she's on my side. However, my ex insists that I should have called. I'm frustrated that he hasn't tried to apologize to our daughter. My mom said that I should have called. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. This really shows where ex's priorities lie. In no version of reality are you responsible for reminding him about a date with his daughter. Interesting that the ex-girlfriend remembered and he didn't. Wants women to do all the emotional work of remembering and reminding. Your mom was taught to carry that load, and she can learn that, no, it is not healthy for any of us if men don't learn to remember on their own. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. He's just mad his new girlfriend saw him for the deadbeat father that he is. Ignore your mom. Listen to your therapist. Yep, because you know that a girlfriend is the only reason is doing this anyway. Not the a-hole. It's not your responsibility to keep your ex in schedule. As a 28-year-old adult, he should take responsibility for himself and his time. One thought, maybe set up a shared calendar so when you have activities that are planned, it can go on a shared calendar. Not that you have to by any means, but just a thought to keep track for you and to eliminate any I forgot excuses from him. That's a good idea, actually. As someone who forgets a lot and uses a calendar app to remember, don't take the effort of making and filling the calendar for him. Tell him about it and let him use it. Otherwise, you will have to do all the work and will still be blamed if something is missed. Next story. Am I the a-hole for expecting my girlfriend to move in and listen to my rules? My girlfriend, 26 female, and I, 28 male, have been living together for a few months. Recently, I got some money after my grandpa passed and was able to buy a duplex. I put down 20% and she and I agreed to split the mortgage, property taxes, insurance, utilities, etc. It comes out to $1,000 for each, and she agreed. But then she wanted to make changes to the house I don't agree with and bring her dog. Her dog has been living with her parents for the three months we moved into together in the place I rented before buying. She wants to bring him because he's her dog and her parents only agreed to let him stay with her temporarily. But I don't want the dog to move in with us and potentially damage the house. He isn't known to damage stuff as far as I know, but he does run around the house. And I want her to pay $100 extra a month for potential damage or $1,000 extra as a damage deposit. She's angry because we agreed on $1,000 and no damage deposit and feels like I'm making it too hard to bring her dog. She also wants to put a clothesline in my backyard and I find it weird and tacky. Maybe it's because I grew up in suburbia, but everyone I know uses the dryer. But she insists she needs to have a clothesline and hates the dryer. She claims her clothing are too expensive to be put in the dryer, and she has only used a clothesline or drying rack her whole life. But that because our yard can accommodate a clothesline, I should allow it. I don't want the neighbor to see her put her underwear on a clothesline, and I think they will complain as it ruins the surrounding house value. She also wants to fill up a large part of the downstairs with her stuff. Our place isn't very big, and she wants to bring her skis, rock climbing equipment like ropes, harness, etc., two bikes and her winter tires. She also wants to buy a mount to install for the bikes for the winter. She doesn't have many other things like clothes, but we don't have a big basement. It's like a half basement, and she wants to put her stuff downstairs. I want to convert the downstairs into a gym for me. But she wants to move her stuff out of her parents' place because they are going to downsize when they retire in a year or two. I told her she needs to either not do these things, like the clothesline, or pay for the storage place and dog. 
She refuses though and says either I let her move in with the agreed upon rent or she's finding another place to live. She's current back with her parents and I've been paying for the whole place alone. She thinks I'm an a-hole for penny pinching her, but I don't think a landlord would be okay with her dog and clothes line, so I'm doing her a favor. She also makes more, 130k versus my 90k, so it's not she can't pay her fair share. Can already tell you are the a-hole. If she is paying rent or mortgage in this place, she has the right to make changes to her living situation. Her asks are normal expectations of things in a home. To turn this around, what you want is for your girlfriend to abandon her clothes, her pet, her hobbies, her belongings, and her income to be a live-in bang maid and pay you for the privilege. Why would anyone agree to that? You messed up and probably destroyed your relationship. You're the a-hole. Right, she pays exactly what he pays, but has to give up everything for the pure joy of it? I hope she sees the writing on the wall and gets out soon. My girlfriend wants to move in together, but get this, she wants to actually live there and bring her stuff. I can't clutch my pearls any harder. Info, do you actually love this woman? Because you're not acting like it. You're the a-hole. If she wants a landlord, she could just get an apartment. If instead, you want her to be your partner, she needs to be able to live in the house. Like, actually live in it. And yeah, lived-in places start to look lived-in. I was going to say exactly this. Opie wants to be a landlord rather than a partner. I think they will complain as it ruins the surrounding house value. A clothesline ruining the value of a whole neighborhood is bar none the most ridiculous thing I read on Reddit. You're the a-hole. You want your girlfriend to move in, split the expenses, but having no or very few of her belongings? This is not how a cohabitation works. I seriously balked at that. Of all the things you ruin a yard, a clothesline? Last story. Am I the a-hole for kicking out my sister because she wouldn't respect my wife? I, 32 male, and my wife, 31 female, sleep in separate bedrooms. It sounds a little weird, but it isn't. My wife has gone through some things, and one thing she refuses to do is sleep in the same room as someone. The only exception is babies and children. She told me from the beginning that she trusts me with every fiber of her being, but she just cannot do it. Of course, I didn't care, and I have my own little bat cave where I sleep. Now, here's where the actual story is. My sister, 27 female, asked if she could stay over at our house for the weekend because apparently her and her roommate got into an argument. Me and my wife agreed, and I told my sister about my wife's room thing. If you know she's sleeping, don't go in there. My sister was always kind of a spoiled brat, but it really shone here. She complained that the bed in the guest room was too lumpy, and she didn't want to sleep in my room because of my man smell. After all this, it was obvious that she would complain about the couch too. I told her my wife's room was off limits, and it was either the options we gave her or she could find a motel. She agreed and everything seemed fine, until I woke up at 3 in the damn morning to my wife yelling, along with my sister. When I went to go see what happened, my wife was crying and my sister was just yelling back. I learned now that my sister sleeps in her underwear, so that made it even worse. I got into an argument and started yelling at my sister to get her crap and get out. I had one rule and she broke it. Her last statement was calling my wife a crybaby. My wife told me that my sister was trying to sleep in her room, possibly trying to kick her out. After that, I got text messages and calls from my parents saying I was a horrible brother for kicking her out like that and agreeing with her saying that my wife was a crybaby and she should suck it up. Of course, I just didn't listen to it. But my wife came to me and started talking about how I could have handled it better and how she got texts from my mother saying the same. She said later the same day that she was happy I protected her. Still don't know why she said that, but it was probably my mother. This is really for if I should just apologize and get my parents off my back. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You offered your sister three different beds to sleep on, and instead, she chooses to literally sneak into the one room she's been told isn't up for grabs in the middle of the night? I'm pretty sure she's a character from a fairy tale. Goldilocks comes to mind. Apparently, her and her roommate got into an argument. Not surprised. Not the a-hole. Honestly, I have a hard time believing the story. 
probably because I can't fathom what was sister's big idea about showing up in early morning in her underwear in someone else's room. But if anything, inappropriate bedtime behavior might be a good reason why roommate kicked her out. Have you heard of I'm the main character subreddit? When it comes to people doing selfish things, I can believe almost anything. Info. What the hell was your sister doing at 3 a.m. in your wife's room in her underwear? Ask your parents for clarification on this. Sorry, my sister sleeps in her underwear and she went into my wife's room to sleep. At least that's what I know. Even though a person was already in the bed, that makes no sense. Talk to your parents properly because sister might be making stuff up. Your sister is absolutely unhinged. Your wife's trauma doesn't even play into this. It is baffling beyond comprehension that someone would climb into bed with someone else without being invited in the middle of the night? Half naked? Not the a-hole. I would be absolutely screaming. Yeah, I don't have hang-ups about sleeping in someone else's presence, and I'd start screaming too. I really don't think there's an innocent explanation for a grown adult crawling into bed with another grown adult who said they don't want her there.